This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Myanmar's military slaughters civilians by bombing a concert. Cambodia could be Putin's off-ramp for his failing war. And if you want to die in a road accident, Siem Reap is the place for you. Now more from our headline story. Just when you thought the dictatorship in Myanmar could not get any worse, they managed to reach an astonishing new low. This week, its military launched an air raid with jet fighters on an open-air concert, killing over 60 innocent people. The latest outrage from the lunatics that run Myanmar is an airstrike on a peaceful concert in Kachin State, which killed over 60 people. The attack, the latest in a string of atrocities against civilians, has drawn worldwide condemnation, including those of the ASEAN who have been grasping at straws for months, desperate to try and get Myanmar to stop the violence. The site of the concert was turned from a peaceful festival into one of people screaming and dying. If this was not enough, the evil regime that rules Myanmar then stopped all ambulances attending the scene, and when civilians tried to take casualties to the local hospitals, they found the roads blocked the death toll ever increasing as people simply bled out or could not access basic medical care that could have saved their lives. The brutal airstrikes have been described as a crime against humanity and experts are not sure as to how the atrocities are to be halted. What we can say is it is now blindingly obvious that Myanmar does not care at all about the Five Point Peace Plan and all efforts have done nothing to rein in its brutal rule. Many are now calling for the end of appeasing the junta with talks and it is now time to take decisive action. So the river of blood that pours from the innocent is no longer in vain. Cambodia has offered to host talks between Russia and Ukraine at the ASEAN summit in a bid to try and bring the ongoing war to an end. And with Russia being soundly beaten on the battlefield, it could be the very off-ramp that Putin is looking for to get out of the war, as he now knows he cannot win. The opportunity to open a dialogue could come at the end of this upcoming ASEAN summit. Russia themselves are now in a desperate situation, with the impending recapture of Kherson, the only major city that the Russians managed to take in their initial assault. They are very much on the losing end of this war. They have suffered a long list of defeats, and with the fall of Kherson, Crimea itself is directly threatened. And if the Ukrainians take back Crimea, then Putin would have failed miserably in his so-called special military operation. Putin is desperate to try and find a way out of this catastrophic mess that he has created. And just maybe talks are the only way he can try and save some sort of face. A senior Cambodian minister has said that Cambodia, as chair of the ASEAN, is ready to host a Russia-Ukrainian meeting in Phnom Penh if both sides wish to negotiate. It can be surmised that many Russian politicians will also be urging Putin to try and find a way out. It's also just maybe that this offer from Cambodia could start the long road to peace talks, as it is not only members of the Russian Duma who will be looking to talk to Putin and to try and convince him he has to get out of this unholy mess. There will also be strong delegations from both India and China, as this war has severely disrupted both trade and global energy supplies, putting the whole world into chaos. Incredibly, this week we saw four Phnom Penh traffic police busted for stealing. They were suspended from duty for unjustly fining innocent motorists, dishing out traffic fines that were not warranted, and then pocketing the money. 
Four traffic officers at the Mao Zedong Boulevard in Phnom Penh have been suspended from their duties after video evidence showed they were guilty of issuing fines to innocent motorists. Deputy Commissioner General and Phnom Penh Municipal Police Commissioner decided to investigate the four officers after evidence was presented of them breaking regulations. Colonel Sansok Seath Spokesman for the Phnom Penh Municipal Police said that after seeing video evidence posted on social media, he ordered the four officers to be detained for questioning. After interrogation of the four officers, they confessed and admitted their guilt and admitted that they had penalised innocent drivers in order to extort money from them. In this case, the drivers were refunded, and the Phnom Penh Municipal Police Office said that they are more than happy to receive information from people if any official violates the law. The four officers involved have been suspended, and their ranks have been lowered. So if you feel that you have been unjustly fined, it may well be worth lodging an official complaint. The government has warned of severe penalties against foreigners who break the law. After discovering more than 85% of foreigners working in the country are violating Cambodia's employment laws. This move is yet another to stem the plague of human trafficking that has been a blight on the kingdom's reputation. This week, the Interior Minister has said that after setting up a Facebook account, they have received over 600 complaints about human trafficking. He said that some victims were tortured, some forced to work long hours, and others regularly cheated out of money. He said, The problem is that more than 85% of foreign workers here in Cambodia are illegal. I myself went to check a place in Bavat to check for illegal workers and found nearly 300 Vietnamese without visas or passports. Cambodia's image took a very serious knock after the United States blacklisted Cambodia in July due to its worsening record on human trafficking. The executive director of Transparency International said, that weaknesses have been exposed within the General Department of Immigration and the Ministry of Labour. In a statement, he said, there are a lot of foreigners who are being trafficked, brought to Cambodia illegally to do many things, some of which are criminal. There are also many involved in illegal gambling, drugs and kidnapping. He expressed concern that the ministries lacked a mechanism to monitor and to implement the law, especially by lower-level officials, including measures to monitor some corrupt officials who conspire with criminal gangs, to allow foreigners to stay and to work illegally within the kingdom. Police are taking action, but much must be done to wipe the stain that these criminal gangs have left, not to mention the trail of misery of its victims. The government has said it is very concerned over the high number of road accident fatalities in Siem Reap province, without doubt the worst in the country. I spend a lot of time there and driving around I see on display what is quite simply lunacy driving. There is little regulation and the standard of driving is not only dangerous, it is quite simply lethal. Siem Rip provincial authorities have confirmed that 116 people were killed in traffic accidents in Siem Rip alone during the past nine months. A traffic accident report says there's 124 accidents within Siem Rip province, an increase of 85 cases but that is only those that were actually reported. Police have been active and the owners of nearly 6,000 vehicles were fined, but it is still way too little enforcement as the numbers continue to rise. The director of the Land Traffic Office at Siem Rib said that the number of traffic accidents in the province was alarming. And at a recent campaign, officers handed out 20 helmets, leaflets on safety 
and 100 reflective stickers to prevent traffic accidents. The director added, The most common cause of traffic accidents in Siem Reap are speeding, not keeping to the right, overtaking in dangerous situations, turning left or turning right in a careless manner, and driving under the influence of alcohol. Now that is pretty much the full gambit, but there is another, and that is the insanity of driving into oncoming traffic, often with young children on the motorcycles. The death toll will only rise until police start to issue fines for moving violations, as there is way too much leniency for people who drive with a very selfish manner. And now it's time to look at our sports news. The T20 World Cup cricket continues and Sri Lanka stay in the tournament with a win over Afghanistan. England got a crucial win over New Zealand with just 20 runs, knowing that defeat would all but eliminate them. England survived under intense pressure to successfully defend their 179 runs. New Zealand needed 61 runs from 31 balls, but England turned the screw and held their nerve to capture a win in one of the most exciting games of the tournament so far. Now it's time to have a look at the Premier League. Here are those results and there's a few to take note of. Chelsea getting beaten 4-1 by Brighton. That's disgraceful for Chelsea. Crystal Palace, they got one goal at Southampton to win and that's great news for them. That keeps them right in the middle of the table. The other big game for us really was Arsenal, the number one team taking on the bottom team, which is our adopted team, Nottingham Forest. And what Arsenal did was took Notts Forest round the back of the bicycle shed and gave them one thorough kicking so they beat them 5-0 now it's over to the tables themselves and what we're going to do is look at the bottom of the table seeing as we looked at the top last time and there you see at the top there and 10th uh, position is Crystal Palace that's why that goal was so important to them we see Leeds and Bournemouth and everyone else wandering around but the strongest team by far is Nottingham Forest. There they are at the very bottom because they're holding up all the others. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. Looking at this week's weather chart, we see that it could be potentially a wet weekend, but clearing up as we go into the beginning of the week, but then the threat of rain returns. The humidity is dropping now at about the 60% level. And also worthy of note is the government has warned that there is a cold spell coming. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.